So, so simmers, my name is Darth Jaswick, and welcome back to the extraterrestrial researcher scenario. We still have to bring back three more unique living alien critters from Voyages into Space. My sim is currently just taking care of her needs because they're awful. Um, she's hungry, she's dirty, and um, <laughs> I guess she just had some really spicy food. Uh, so we'll have to take care of her needs really quick. She's very tired, and I don't think we should send her into space tired. Um, I don't want her to like crash or anything, so I'll have her take a shower and then she can go to sleep. Hopefully she doesn't die from the bed, because that would also be tragic. Bjorn wants to come over. No. No. We only have $57. So, it would be nice if we had more money. Um, we need to explore space to do that, though. Because then we have the potential to bring back items from space that we can sell. Um, I also have a few, like, plants growing over here to the side. Um, I don't think anything is in season. Except for maybe the crystal trees. No. Yeah, it seems like our dragon fruit is in season, so that's good. Hopefully it will pop out a few plants soon. Um, these crystal trees I know take forever. We might not even... We might finish the little series here before these grow. A sighting. While passing the asteroid belt, Danny notices something ducking behind a nearby rock. Danny slowly guides her ship in to navigate. Uh, a decision. Danny notices an odd green colored creature shaped like a plumb bob. It doesn't seem to have realized that Danny was nearby. Should Danny try to communicate with it or watch quietly from a distance? Try to communicate. Nice to meet you. Danny sends a message of peace to the creature who responds by flashing brightly green. It leads Danny around to a hole in the asteroid, which she can see is glowing with beautiful gems. Danny grabs a few and stores them on her ship. We found a space rock. Is it? Yeah, it's the same one as before, which is fine. 145, we can sell that for. Bye, everybody. I'm going to space. She also has like two days before she has to get married or we uh, lose the money. Commerce in deep space. What's that up ahead? Danny cruises over for a closer look and sees a hulking old ship. It's flying a flag with a space cash symbol, which is the intergalactic symbol for commerce. It's a trader ship that wants to do business. Danny begins the docking procedure. Enough space in the spacecraft. The old trader ship is overflowing with cargo. He offers to let Danny keep some of the cargo if she'll transport the rest to his buyer on Earth. Danny's ship's cargo bay isn't very large, and the extra weight could crash her ship. Should she risk it or just take a little bit of the cargo? Let's take all the cargo. Just see what happens. Unleash the cargo. Every light in Danny's cockpit is flashing, and every siren is blaring. The cargo is just too much. Danny jettisons the extra poundage into space. The trader's going to be furious, but hopefully it helps Danny make re-entry without any catastrophes. Aww. We don't have enough money to extend our cargo bay, so that's something that we need to work on. That's why we need to get married. I do have the Love Struck expansion pack now, so we do have Cupid's Corner. Uh, okay, this is the same Plum Bob thing. A sighting. A decision. Um, let's try to communicate again. When she gets back from space, we'll set up her Cupid's Corner. We found another space rock we can sell. Only 95 simoleons, though, so that's not, not as good as the last one. Um, can we have her display herself as, like, an adrenaline seeker and not an overachiever and maybe just, like, active or uh, loves outdoors? She doesn't have any turns on, turn-ons or turn-offs, um, but she is inter she's interested in woohoo with women and men, but she's only romantically attracted to men, um, not elders. I don't want elders. They die too quick. Already just going to refresh matches. We have Fabian, Mitchell, Oscar, Rada, Clement. I'm going to heart Clement Frost because he has a lot of money. Alexis and Simeon. Um, can we like ask on a create a date with <laughs> Father Winter? <laughs> I am 100% marrying this man for his money. 
Um, so get to know you date. Yeah, let's just do that one. We can star or cloud gaze, socialize and be friendly and be romantic. Maybe we can grab some food. We'll put woohoo on there just for fun. We could do drinks maybe, and then we could um, maybe go to one of the new bars in the new world. Is there a new bar in the new world? Oh, here, here we go. See you, dad, and Emirato. Um, yeah, let's do this one. This is the one that was in the trailer, I think. Okay, we are here on a date with Father Winter. Um, can we just like, straight off the bat, just start some small talk? Maybe get to know him, brighten his day, watch the stars on this bench. Okay, actually, I want to see what the inside of this bar because I haven't ha I haven't seen it yet. This is my first time ever like playing with the pack itself. I do like this bar though. It's very nice. Well, this is cool. I like this indoor fountain here. Oh, we got a nice little lounge area upstairs. A little overlook on the bar or on the piano overlook. There's a third bathroom upstairs. The costume trunk is also there. Okay, how's it going over here? Okay, wait. <laughs> Can I get a picture of these two together? That is so funny. There we go. Love that. Love them together. Share my personality quirks and share some personal details. Um, maybe we flirt a little bit. Uh, Clement has learned that Danny is unemployed. Danny clued Clement in on some of her personal details about her life. Clement has learned the following Danny's career and Danny's financial status. Acquired the romance skill too. Um, did he take our romance well? I don't I didn't even see. So he's doing a dance for us. Clement is doing a sexy dance for us. Look at that. Clement is doing a sexy dance for us, you guys. Get it, Clement? Yeah. I think she liked it too. <laughs> They're having a steamy exchange. Um, we need to eat something, drink something. Oh, she's dancing back. Oh, that was cool. Okay, let's go inside and grab a drink together. There's a lot of sims here. Um, let's order some food. Let's just do some french fries. Let's order some french fries. That sounds so good right now. Oh, he's asleep on the bench! Sir, you're not supposed to sleep on our date. He's like full out snoring. You are so rude. I'm still gonna marry him for his money though. He's an old man. I can't really expect that much. It is like kind of late. Kyle, did you eat yet? Jesus, put these in your inventory then. Take those fries with you. Can we like wake him up? Like, excuse me, please wake up, sir. Can we stargaze again? And while we're doing that, can we like maybe flirt a little bit more? Tease flirtatiously. Can we talk about our food? That's what it wants us to do. Talk about savory food. Romantic satisfaction begins. Danny and Clement have a strong romantic relationship and will now have independent relationship satisfaction levels. High romantic satisfaction will make maintaining romantic relationship easier. Low romantic satisfaction will make maintaining romantic relationships more difficult. Ooh, new personality trait. Danny has become overwhelmed with romance lately and feels a compelling desire to embody the essence of a love bug. Yeah. Oh, we can now share a sweetheart box. Can we do that with, can we do that? Um, well, there are a few things I care about when it comes to a partner's personality. These are, these are the things that I care about. Academic skills, culinary skills, engineering skills, funny sims, and spirited sims. His turnoffs are arts and crafts. Oh, they're sexy dancing again. They're dancing with each other. They're doing a sexy dance together. Look at that. Go Clement, go Clement. Okay, can we woohoo? Can we kiss him? Okay, she's she's gonna make out with Clement. Aw, adorable. Okay, is there a woohoo closet in this building? There is. Um, woohoo with Clement. Okay, he said yes, so we're gonna go woohoo. We have reached level three of the romantic skill. They're gonna go woohoo in the closet up here. I wanna like see how it works. I'm assuming it's like the same as the other one. Okay, they're gonna go in. They're gonna make out first probably. Yep, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like a supply closet. Love it. 
I don't know if there's any other sims here. I think most of the other sims are downstairs. So thankfully they're alone. <laughs> they had fun. Good for you guys. Okay, wait. Don't go anywhere yet. Can you propose to Father Winter? Oh, we can give him a romantic gift of french fries. Um, let's flirt a couple more times. It'd be fun to get a gold date. Uh, Danny and Clement are both very satisfied in their relationship. Let's ask to extend our date a little bit because we're almost running out of time. Uh, become romantic partners, yes. Uh, may more time for rendezvous. Okay. Okay, maybe we just get to know him a little bit more because we can't propose to him yet. Enthused about interests. There's so many Sims downstairs, I can hear them all. Compliment his outfit. Propose early? Yes, that's what we're gonna do. Right on this balcony. Ooh, on the bright side. Looks like Danny just befriended an optimistic sim. Optimists have a very glass half full view of life. They never fail to see the positive side of things and their perspectives can inspire sims around them. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Moving too fast. Before I can even get a screenshot. You propose to Father Winter, girl. Please say yes. No! Oh, no. He said no. That hurts. Um, she's got a pee. Whoa, hold on. This is sudden. We just shared our first kiss and now you want to get married? What's the rush? Let's enjoy the moment. Can we think about marriage later? Oh my god. No, Clement. We only have like two days. Oh, and he just like walked into the bathroom while we were on the toilet. Oh, I've been thinking about this a lot and wanted to ask if you would like to live together. Yeah. I love that. You can move in. We're just gonna take all your money, but yeah. 100% you can live with us. Uh, we have a new romance dynamic, Wholesome. How tender, Danny and Clement seem to care for each other, both as lovers and as friends. Romantic partners with the wholesome romantic dynamic choose to perform romantic, friendly, or funny interactions with each other more often and hold a meaningful place in each other's hearts. Would you describe the dynamic between Danny and Clement as being wholesome? Yes, I would. I was worried about him just like leaving, but I guess now that they're like living together, he won't. Uh, great music. Clement seems to be enjoying the song. Should he embrace that he likes romance music? Yeah, sure. We just have to finish this date. It's like 25 minutes. So, just a few minutes. Um, we can also woohoo again, maybe. They might be able to. <laughs> oh, nope. Okay. Never mind. Silver medal. Alright. Um, we can go home now. Alright, um, so I'll start her working on some of the upgrades that we still need. Um, like this landing stabilizer, but we'll start with the expansion of the cargo bay. Father Winter is asleep in the tent. He's doing okay as far as his needs go. He's a little tired, but if he's in the house, then he can probably sleep in the bed too. So, he doesn't have to sleep out in the tent. Oh my god, I did not expect him to take his shirt off when he laid down. <laughs> Guess that's why they call him Daddy Winter. Oh, we have 24 hours to pay our bills, that's right. Um, our mailbox is back here. Oh, we only have $90 in bills. Why did I think it was a lot more? Because we have a rocket. <laughs> like, a full rocket. Um, okay, we have completed our upgrade. She is unfortunately, like, exhausted right now. She spent most of the night out with uh, Father Winter. You guys can sleep in the same bed, can't you? You woohooed. That'll be a lot better. I should probably get them, like, a better bed. That might help. Oh, the eco-inspector's here. I'm not gonna let them in because I'm sleeping. I'm also gonna have her get some leftovers and take a shower. And then we can go explore space again. Clement is gonna go pay the bills for us. Yeah, after she just gets her needs taken care of a little bit, we'll just go up into space. Uh, space Pirates. Danny sees some unsavory characters approaching fast in her rearview mirror. Uh-oh, those are Space Pirates. And Danny's about to be shipjacked. They demand a suitcase full of simoleons to let Danny pass, or else. Um, let's attack. 
Um, can you fix that, Daddy Winter? Let's just, uh, replace it. It's only 75, so we can afford it now. Love that he has the friend of the world aspiration. Danny is fierce. Whoa, that escalated quickly, but Danny's quick offensive strike took the pirates by surprise, and they crumble into a teary, blubbering puddle. They even offer Danny some spare wires and loose change to entice her to leave them alone. Take the offer. Nobody mess with Danny. Those pathetic pirates practically trip over each other in order to get out of Danny's way, but before they go, they wash Danny's windshield and give her a quick oil change just to stay on her good side. Return home. Oh, we got a dead red coral! And that's our third little thing. And we also have a live pink whale, um, which counts as our third. Not our fourth, though, apparently. Which, I don't know why that didn't count as our fourth one, but oh well. Guess it doesn't. It's 210 simoleons, too. We'll put that out there. And then we'll just go right back to space. We have really nice weather for this today. It's actually sunny. It hasn't been sunny in this game like the entire time, but now that it's fall, it's actually sunny, which is so funny. So weird to me. Accidental bootlegger. Danny, fill Danny is filling up on rocket fuel when an alien spacecraft pulls up to the pump next to her. Danny doesn't think much of it until she sees the alien loading crates onto her ship. The space police are after me. The alien shouts, hide the stuff. I promise I'll make it worth it. Okay. You don't really get much of a choice in that. Oh, he's cleaning the toilet. Thank you, Clement. Surrounded by the space police, Danny is still choking on the alien spacecraft exhaust when she hears sirens blaring in the distance. The space police surround Danny's rocket ship and demand to search her cargo bay. She can turn over the goods and hope for the best or help the alien, and possibly herself, by hiding it. Let's hide it. Uh, Clement, you want to take a shower there, dude? She's going to have to pee when she gets back. Misdirected like a pro, luckily the police captain seems to be into Danny with a dash of charm and some crafty fast talk. Danny distracts the cop from performing a thorough search and the police are gone in no time. And now Danny just has to find her alien friend. Uh, new personality trait, Clement has enjoyed cleaning and doing household chores lately. There's a sparkle of joy when things are neat. Yes, you can embrace that. Rewarded, Danny pilots her ship to a remote rest stop, but just as Danny is about to pry open the first crate, she notices a small red flashing light, a tracker. Just then, the alien knocks at her window. As the smuggler unloads his stuff, she slip he slips Danny a small package and thanks before vanishing in a cloud of exhaust. Return home. What did we get? A fossilized what's it? Is that our fourth object? No, I don't think so. Oh, it's just a rock. Okay. We don't need any more rocks. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's just put it out here in the garden. Oh, it's like a plumb bob. That's cool. Um, use the restroom, Danny, and then we'll go back to space. I really want to get this fourth one today. That'd be nice. Clement is just kind of here. Oh, we do have to get married, though, so maybe we should do that instead just to get that off of Danny's mind so she's not, like, a nervous wreck. Woohoo with Clement, there you go. And get him in a flirty mood and then we can propose. I think he still has to propose. You know, I've had babies with Father Winter before in my 100 baby challenges, but it's still weird to see him like without his like Santa outfit on. You know what I'm talking about? It's like seeing like the Teletubbies with their heads off. It's just weird. Declare love publicly. I wonder if our friendship is just not high enough because I'm not seeing like I'm not seeing the propose option, because our romance bar is full. Kyle, you and Clement are just so cute together. Just thought I'd let you know. Aw, Kyle, thank you. I heard you became friends with Clement Frost. He's pretty cool. Yeah, he is. Maybe we can do a suave kiss. Oh, I guess we're asleep. Never mind. Just so we can speed through the night, and then we'll, we'll launch the rocket again in the morning. All right, I'm going to wake her up. She's got a full energy bar. She's just a little hungry, and then we're gonna launch. Maybe we can, like, give her a compliment on her outfit. Um, I'm trying to do some stuff from Clement's side as well. We can flatter our wife, well, future wife. We have, like, one day. We can serenade, maybe. Um, we have to get married in 10 hours, in less than 10 hours, uh, in order to get that extra money. 
Um, I mean, we don't necessarily need it right now, but I also want to see how much money we can make because, you know, it's fun. What skills does Clement have? So many, actually. He is maxed handiness, maxed baking, maxed the singing and parenting skills, also max charisma. I didn't think he would have, like, that much. But, like, yeah, dang. Father Winter's got it going on. Oh, they're cuddling. Look at it. They're so cute. Oh, my God. They are so adorable. Okay, let's just go to space because I don't know what's going on with their relationship. I don't know why I can't propose. I feel like they should be at that point. Unless it's, like, because she proposed and he said no, then they're not going to do it at all. I mean, we don't really need to do it. I just think it would be funny if they could get that extra money at this point. Uh, accidental, accidental bootlegger. Oh, this is the same one we just had. Danny is filling up the rocket on rocket fuel when a, an alien spacecraft pulls up to the pump next to us. Uh, Danny doesn't think much of it until she sees the alien loading crates under her ship. The space police are after me. The alien shouts, hide the stuff. I promise I'll make it worth it. Oh, I love that you can see, like, the little flashlight in there. What is he doing? He's just playing. Aw. Surrounded by the space police. We should probably just, like, hide the cargo. Maybe he can just, like, make a lemon meringue pie. I love lemon meringue pie. Looks like we got through that. Looks like we got something from our smuggler, so we're gonna return home. We got a cow plant! Yes! I honestly don't think I've ever gotten a cow plant in a Let's Play before. I don't- maybe the last one? I don't remember. I don't remember if we got one with the Home Chef Hustle one. I think it's already been 10 hours. Maybe not. Six hours. Oh, it's lottery day! We don't have a computer. Maybe we'll get one. It might be nice to have a little bit bigger house, too. <laughs> oh. Clement is done with his lemon meringue pie. Look at that. Oh, that looks good. Something is alive. Rattle, rattle, crash. Danny is on the way back from Comet Isan Flea Market. As she hears banging inside her rocket's cargo hole, she thinks back through recent salvage efforts. Nothing living, re certainly. Should Danny call out or just try to take whatever it is by surprise? Call out. That looks delicious, Clement. I want to make a lemon meringue pie now. I think I might do that as soon as I can get some lemons from the grocery store. <laughs> um, no reply. Danny picks up a piece of pipe metal and shouts, anybody there? The rattling stops. Silence. She calls again. Again, there's no response. Whatever in there doesn't seem to want to be found. Danny has two choices. She can brace the door shut or go in swinging. Um, let's brace the door. Um, we've got a small cry of distress. So far, so good. Ever since Danny braced the door, the cargo hold has been silent. If she can make it to a pest extermination station, she can get the problem taken care of and be on her way. But then a new sound starts. Small, sad, sobbing. Does Danny stick to her guns or peek in the hold? Take a peek. Um, but if she doesn't find anything on this trip, we'll probably end this episode here. And... I'll renovate the house in between and maybe even make like a quick little episode about it and then we can continue on and uh, maybe do one or two more episodes of this because we've only been finding like one creature every episode. Ambushed. Danny slowly opens the door and peers inside. Just then, something soft and squishy thumps onto her back and a tentacle threads around her neck. Don't move, a small voice whispered. Everything goes black. Danny faints, which is technically moving captured ouch danny's head hurts and when she tries to move she realizes she's handcuffed to her pilot seat a sharp a sharp cold object is poking her back take me home a voice stammers it's oddly deep and danny realizes it's, it's a juvenile voice trying to sound older does she comply or try to reason with juvenile um let's reason <laughs> The stowaway. So much better. Free of handcuffs, Danny sizes up the creature she'd bought as a taxidermy. It's just a stupid juvenile that, that was dared by its brother to pretend. Now it wants a joyride around the galaxy and a free lift home. Does she know? Danny knows she could get charged with alien napping, but she did promise. Go for it. Hopefully we don't get in trouble. 
Joyride in space, yeehaw, nothing like a white-eyed kid to make Danny feel like a hero, kicking her ship into hyperwarp. She blasts loops around planet Tomutu until suddenly lights appear in the distance, space cops. Danny could pull over and try to explain or try to outrun them. I want to just pull over. I feel like that's a safe option. Uh, we need to achieve level 6 logic skill still in her aspiration. Not that we're really trying to do too much of it. Um, we should probably work on that though, just so we could get through all of this stuff. We should be able to get most of this done right away. The achieve level 5 handiness, launch or upgrade a rocket 5 times. We already own a rocket ship. Then we would just have to achieve level 10 of the logic skill and fix or upgrade 5 objects. So we don't have that much to go. A uh, few of the cops believe Danny and take her little orange buddy home. Now Danny can head home herself and wonder how a single trip to the flea market got so out of control. Um, and we have returned safely. Where are we as far as the logic skill goes? So we just reached level five of the logic skill. We'll play a little chess with Daddy Winter. We are, we are in a tiny home still, so we should fly along with this skill. We do have a no-touching quirk. Faze Jaleel. Hey Danny, I think Monica Lopez is pretty cute. Should I ask her out? Yeah, go for it, man. It's Harvest Fest tomorrow. Can you keep playing? Oh, that's cute. They're giving hugs to each other. I don't want to go anywhere, Faze. Thanks. Pretty sure we're out of time. I don't think we have that much time left. We have two hours for the Married for Money. We might as well try. I don't even know if we can do it. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I don't know why I can't propose. Like, it's not even, like, an option. We can profess our undying love. So, we are level 6 of the logic skill. I'm gonna go launch a rocket. And then we'll need to work on our handiness skill. He's just like talking and she's like getting in a rocket and flying away. Uh, space madness. Danny is suddenly feeling anxious and jumpy. There's a strange tingling sensation in her hands and feet and she feels a little lightheaded. Should she give us, could she have space madness? Could something be wrong with the airflow? Uh, we'll swap our CO2 scrubber. Clement, can you like harvest all these? Let's just sell those dragon fruit. Look at our little cow plant. Oh, we need to water him. I'll have Clement do all that for us. While Danny's in space. Feeling good. The fresh air really helped and now she feels better. If Danny had actually had space madness, she'd start getting paranoid and make really terrible decisions. Now how to spend her day up here in space. Let's spacewalk. Beautiful space day. It's so pretty outside, look at the northern lights. Danny can't spend the whole space day cooped up inside like this. She needs to get out of there and enjoy the beautiful weather. She ventures toward the airlock and gets ready to go outside and take a nice walk. Put on your spacesuit. Oh, okay. Danny, the spacewalk is going to be amazing. Danny puts on her suit along with your with its auxiliary air tank, after a few minutes of breathing clean air, she regains her sanity and realizes what happened. She decides to stay in the suit and just head for home. Luckily, she didn't do anything too crazy. Lost in space. Danny is gliding through the galaxy when she notices a constellation that she has never seen before. Double checking her coordinates, Danny realizes she is not where she thought at all. What's more, her ship's GPS galactic positioning system has gone black. She's lost in space. Keep calm. A treasure map. Trying not to panic, Danny scans the horizon for familiar stars. There, a flashing light. She zooms closer, only to discover a mysterious glass canister with what looks like a message beacon inside. Extracting it, Danny finds a map with an X marked into a planet near the constellation's head. It's almost too good to be trusted. What now? Let's follow the map. Uh, the tunnel. Sure enough, the map leads Danny to a charred-looking planet with a lone tree growing from the cliff. At first glance, the place seems abandoned, but then she notices the opening to a small tunnel beneath the tree. Go in. Yeah, let's get in that hole. 
Found something. Danny calls out. No answer. The only sound is a soft dripping, donning her trusty headlamp. She treads quietly into the tunnel, deeper and deeper, until she sees a beam of light coming through a crack in the ceiling. Under it is a locked box, so she pry it open here or bring it back to the ship. Let's take it back to the ship. Got treasure. Danny acts fast, heaving the box onto her shoulders. She crams it into her cargo hold, but can't resist a peek before working on her GPS. Treasure, mounds of it. Someone will be looking for this soon. In fact, Danny can sense a rumbling in the distance, which seems to be getting closer. Get out of there. Go, girl. Escaped. Danny sets to work on her GPS. Reboot, reboot, reboot. Yes, there it is. A signal at last. She blasts off and just in time too. An army of spidery aliens has covered the the hillside and fires at her ship. Good thing she got those those trusty thrusters. Danny is free, clear, and on her way home in no time. We found a space rock. And we have safely returned. Ooh, that's a big space rock. 200. She's like, I don't want to go back to space. I just got back. We'll put that there. Oh, and Clement is now talking to Paolo, which is, I'm pretty sure, one of our exes. Commerce deep in space. Um, what's up ahead? Danny cruises over for a closer look and sees a hulking old ship. It's flying a flag with a space cash symbol. Which is the intergalactic symbol for commerce. It's a trader ship that wants to do business. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, no. Actually, he's just a friend. Paolo is just one of our friends, so. Danny, the middleman. The grizzled old trader has an offer for Danny. Deliver some of his cargo back to Earth and Danny can keep some of it. She can use herself... Uh, she can use it herself or make big bucks selling it. The cargo bay is pretty large, so Danny accepts the offer. Deliver the goods. A good day, Danny and the trader load up the ship, and Danny blasts away. She heads for home. It's smooth sailing. There's no traffic in the asteroid belt, and Danny's even getting pretty good gas mileage. Plus, Danny is on track for a sweet payday when she gets home. All right, 500 bucks. That's, like, not that great, but okay. <gasps> Look at her tiny, tiny, tiny cowplant. He's so cute. Ow. God, Rocket is so loud. <laughs> so loud. Okay, so I think we are going to end this episode here. We didn't really make much progress in getting our five creatures. We did get one. Actually, we got... Technically, we got two. Uh, so I don't know why I didn't count it as having two. But, you know, it is what it is. It's The Sims. It's probably some kind of glitch. Because uh, technically, they're supposed to be living aliens. And all three of these other critters are dead. Um... But <laughs> I will end this episode here. And if you enjoyed this, uh, please make sure to give it a like. I'll link a couple of my other Let's Plays on the end card here for you to check out if you want. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop it a like because it really helps out. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you all in the next video. Dag dag!